So now that you've looked at the definition of a basis of a vector space, I wanted to talk through uh, some the, the standard basis for some common vector spaces. So you've seen that the definition of a basis of a vector space is a collection of, of vectors within that vector space that meet two criteria. Number one, they're linearly independent. And number two, um, those vectors span the vector space, meaning you could take any element of the vector space and write it as a linear combination of those vectors. Uh, so first example, let's take R2. So uh, R2 refers to the collection of all vectors with two entries here. So let's say X, Y. Um, so anything in R2 can be broken down as, uh, well here, we could break this apart as X0 plus 0Y. That would certainly add up to X, Y. And then in this vector here, I could take out this uh, scalar X times the vector 1, 0. In the second one, take out the scalar Y times 0, 1. And so, what I'm saying here is that any vector in R2 can be written as a linear combination of these two vectors. So my candidate for a standard uh, basis, well, in fact, the standard basis for R2 is uh, the collection containing these two vectors. Notice, okay, so, so the span is, is illustrated here. Um, notice that if we want to check linear independence, uh, we would say, okay, well, so suppose I have a scalar A times the first vector plus some scalar B times the second vector in that set. Then when I put that together, I'll have A, B. If that's equal to the zero vector, then that would imply that A has to be zero and B has to be zero. So that equation has only the trivial solution. So these vectors are linearly uh, independent. Whenever you have vectors in this form where um, I've got a non-zero entry in the second position and every other vector in the set has a zero in that position, then um, they're going to be linearly independent. So whenever you've got non-zero in this position, everything else is zero there, and then non-zero here, everything else is zero there. If that's true for every entry, uh, then they'll automatically be linearly um, independent. Okay. So that's R2. Standard basis for R2 is uh, just the collection with those two unit vectors. Let me write that down. So 1, 0, 0, 1. Um, so R3, you're probably, you wouldn't be surprised then. So R3 is the collection of all vectors of the form X, Y, Z. So we could break that down the same way. Uh, and generate this standard basis 1, 0, 0, because we would do x times 1, 0, 0, and then plus y times 0, 1, 0, plus c times 0, 0, 1. Uh, any vector x, y, z can certainly be written as a linear combination of these three vectors, just x times this vector, y times this vector, z times this vector. And if I set up the equation, I guess I'll write it again. So A times this first vector, B times the second vector, C times the third vector, then that's going to give me just this vector ABC. If that's equal to the zero vector, then each of ABC must be equal to zero. So it's got only the uh, trivial solution. So these are linearly independent. So that's a basis. It meets those two criteria. Okay. Um, how about, let's say, P3. So P3 is a collection of all polynomials degree 3 or lower. So you can have some number, let's say A uh, times x cubed plus some number B times x squared. Okay, you get the idea C times x plus a constant D. So anything in P3 is going to have this form which is a scalar times x cubed, and just x cubed on its own. I mean, that's a polynomial in P3. Just y equals x cubed, sure. Same with y equals x squared. But so you've got some scalar times x cubed plus some scalar times x squared 
plus some scalar times x to the first, plus let's say this is d times 1. So then I'm saying that anything in P3 can be written as a linear combination of these four polynomials. And they are linearly independent. It's not like you can write x squared as a combination of x cubed and x to the first, as a linear combination of those. We can't do it. You can't add up something times x cubed, something times x, and generate x squared. It's not going to happen. And same with any other individual element here. So none of these uh, polynomials is a linear combination of the others. So they're linearly independent. So those are the two criteria. They're dependent and uh, they span they're linearly independent. I'm sorry, I'm doing the same thing I do in class. Linearly independent, and they span uh, all of P3. Okay, um, I guess one more for this video. What if you've got a collection of matrices? I'm going to get rid of this, since now I know you can pause, so I don't have to keep stuff on the board here. One more example. What if you have the collection of all... Um, I don't want to make it too big. So let's say, uh, well, two by three matrices. So anything in M two by three is going to have this form. So A, B, C, D, E, F, which means you could write this as A times this matrix plus B times this matrix. And I think I might not write all of them plus C times, okay. You get the idea. Um, well, so a standard basis for M2 by 3 is just kind of think of it as your unit matrices. So where you put um, one in each position, you know, one at a time. Blah, 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 blah. You'll, have, you'll end up with six total matrices here. Maybe I should list all of them here this. So you'll have, uh, what else? Zero. Have this guy. This guy. And ah, there you go. Last one. So there's a basis for M2 by 3.